Oh, hello there. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be looking at the uh, Cypripedium rootstock. So you can see the kinds of attributes that you're looking for when buying Cypripediums or repotting them. Um, we're going to be looking at both healthy and unhealthy aspects. Uh, we're going to start today with this uh, small plant of uh, Cypripedium aki which is a uh, hybrid between uh, Macranthus and uh, uh, Pubescens, well, Parvoflorum variety Pubescens. So let me go ahead, I partially removed it here and it's looking pretty good so far. I'll go ahead and uh, pull it out fully and then I'll, I'll come back and we'll talk about it a little bit. Okay, well I have um, taken the plant out of the pot and uh, now I'm going to show you what a fairly healthy Cypripedium rootstock looks like. We'll talk about this a little bit. Um, of course you see the new uh, growth eyes there that will be coming into growth in another couple, mm, probably three months from now. It's January right now. And you see all these new white roots. Um, these are of course what are going to be sustaining the plant in the coming season. The uh, darker brown, older roots um, are not necessarily diseased. Um, because of the area I live in, uh, these plants get a lot of thermal stress in the summertime, and this is grown in a pot, so uh, that's accentuated. Um, this plant, in fact, I'm not going to grow in a pot again this year, simply because um, uh, the roots are too stressed. Also, in a pot-grown plant, you'll see that the roots are uh, truncated like that. They're, they're small. Uh, in a ground situation, in a proper compost, uh, Cypripedium roots can uh, run for hmm, at least two feet in some, in a hybrid like this, and uh, even longer in some of the other species like, say, uh, Regine. Um, things to look at are the whiteness of the root. Um, Notice the buds themselves too are also quite white and in good shape. Um, even the darker roots are not uh, that bad. They're brown, but they're not too brown. And importantly, the root tips of the new roots are uh, alive and uh, potentially growing again. That's key because there's a lot of nutrient uptake at that point. Um, I'll show you closer in. It's kind of hard now to show you the root tips, but I'll show you the root tips in a second here. So let's go ahead and I'll turn off the video and show you a closer macro shot. Okay, well here are examples of healthy root tips. I'll try to move around here so you can see what they look like. Um, they can be a little bit off color, but they should not be black at all. And that's the main criteria there. If you see a blacking, a blackening or a breaking, uh, then you'll know that that is not a healthy root tip. But the, these root tips are quite healthy. Um, go ahead and give a close-up on the eyes here as well. Again, clean, white to cream color. Uh, a darkening of the older roots is okay as long as it isn't black and if they aren't mushy giving off a, a kind of an odd smell. Okay, to serve as a contrast to uh, the plant we just saw, the Cypripedium aki with the relatively healthy rootstock, here we have a Cypripedium henrii that, um, well, quite frankly, is uh, either a plant that was very uh, mishandled in a uh, garden situation or much more likely was a, a wild collected plant from this fall uh, taken out of the wild usually uh, very brusquely and then um, transported to a distributor and then sent out to other people who would sell it from there um, I bought this plant online uh, yeah, bad boy I know uh, I bought it mostly to uh, educate people about what to look for in Cypripedium stock should you be buying things online and actually seeing the product 
the real standout here is that blackening of the bud, the new growth bud there. Um, very likely that growth bud will still develop okay. But notice moreover that the roots are a dark color throughout, showing that um, this is uh, not necessarily a healthy root stock. In fact, um, that darkening, although that can happen from the compost it's growing in, uh, particularly tannins and stuff getting in there, um, that tells you that the, even the roots this year have been compromised. And we'll go ahead and look in a little deeper there when I go into the next uh, closer focus mode here, and you can see specifically some problem areas. Okay. Okay, let's look at the roots first. First of all, um, what you'll see is that there is a, a general brown color to all the roots, even this year's roots, which is not a good sign. Um, again, there is that uh, browning on the growth bud, which doesn't mean that the bud inside is dead. It just means that this thing has been stressed. Uh, very importantly, let me find a good example. Um, perhaps this root is a good example. You'll see that the tip of the root is brown, and many times they're dying. Like here, I'll go ahead and pull this one off. Did you see that? So it's actually falling apart. That shows that there's a bacterial infection going on in there. Uh, again, this isn't necessarily fatal, but it shows a plant that has been highly stressed. Here's a really bad root here. Look at that one. And by the way, when you do get a plant like this, you should try to clean it up, get all those root tips cleaned off, and uh, some kind of a fungicide treatment wouldn't be bad. Um, this is a pretty strong species, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit and just plant it right out into a bed. Uh, this species seems to do fairly well in a relatively hot climate here. But anyway, so these are some of the examples of what uh, to avoid when looking at uh, Cypripedium rootstock. So if you're buying online and you can actually see the product you're buying, you see anything like this, uh, avoid it. Okay. Uh, wild rootstock can be salvaged. Uh, this is a Macranthos division that I bought uh, in its initial year. You can see the new roots there. And the same roots closer in. Uh, the same plant in its second year divided into uh, two pieces. Finally, the larger division in its third year looking healthy with uh, lots of new roots and a good growth bud. I hope this video has helped you in determining what a healthy sarpopedium looks like.